Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am Mr. Photographer. Com. In this video, I'm going to share with you some techniques that hopefully will help you create better black and white images in Lightroom. Now, we're working on this image here. Of course, it's a color image right now. And there's actually three different ways you could convert this color image into a black and white image using Lightroom. The first way is the least popular way. It's just taking the saturation slider and pulling it all the way down. Now, most photographers don't use this method, but they will use this method if they want just a little bit of color in the image. So if they want kind of a washed out image, they still want a little color in there, then they'll use this method. But as I mentioned, that probably isn't the popular way or, or way most of us would do it if we want a straight black and white image. The other thing that photographers often do to convert an image to black and white is use a profile. So if I'm in the basic tab and I open the profile browser by clicking on these four little bricks, you can see under the B and W tab here, uh, there's a lot of different black and white profiles and I could just hover over them and we could choose one of these profiles. So that's definitely a way to go. And if you find something there you like, that could save you a lot of time in your processing. But that still probably isn't the most popular way to tell you the truth. The most popular way is to just, while you're in the basic tab, just click on this little black and white button right there and you convert it to black and white. Now, there is some debate of whether you should do that real early in your processing, like I did it first thing, or if you do it somewhere down the line, like you affect tone a little bit, like tone, when I say tone, I'm saying these adjustments right here. You adjust these first, then do black and white. It really doesn't matter. Do it wherever uh, you think it's comfortable for you in your workflow for what you're trying to accomplish. Now, what I want to go forward, though, is show you some techniques once you do this, because this is the most popular way to do it. And it's the most popular way to do it when I say do it, convert an image to black and white. The reason why it's the most popular way is because you have the most control over the tones in the image. Because let's face it, once you convert it to black and white, all you have left are tones. You don't have any color to talk about. So you need to manipulate these tones to make a pleasing image. And there's a number of different ways, of course, you can uh, adjust tones in an image. Of course, there's the straightforward way, right? You go to highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and you could adjust these to get the tone set the way you want it in your image. So that is, you know, obviously one thing you probably do on every image. Now, another thing, and probably the most popular way, besides just adjusting these four sliders here, these if you count six sliders, exposure and contrast, is you go down to this tab here. Notice it's B and W. If you're not familiar, that used to be the HSL tab. When we had a color image, that's HSL color. But as soon as you convert it to black and white, that gets the heading B and W, and it's the B and W mix. And what this allows you to do is you could um, affect the luminance value of what were the colors in the image. For example, we know the sky was blue. And if I want to make what was blue in the image darker, I could just go to the blue mix slider and pull it down. And I'm making the sky darker. Anything that was blue in that image will be get darker, will get darker. Uh, similarly, the grass, uh, that's a mix of yellow and green. And if I go to like... Uh, green, see how it's making the trees mainly brighter if I move to the right, darker to the left. Yellows will probably affect the grass more, and you can see how that's affecting that. So you could really affect the tones in the image, um, you know, very easily with the black and white mix sliders. Now, the next two ways are ways many photographers overlook. The first way is if we go up to white balance, believe it or not, if you're starting out with a color image and you click on black and white, white balance will still affect the image. So you can see as I move temperature warmer to the right, I'm making the image pretty much brighter, darker to the left. Um, tint, also I'm kind of shifting the tones a little bit when I adjust tint. Most often, I will do the black and white mix first, then I'll come in and I'll move this tint slider around just a little bit to kind of, you know, just see if I like the way the uh, the grays in the image uh, like look 
by moving this slider slightly. So don't overlook these two sliders. And the final way that you could affect the tones in the image, which I think most photographers overlook, is with the calibration tab. Here we, of course, have the red primary, green primary, blue primary, and at the top we have this shadows uh, tint. All these sliders will affect the tones of the image. So if you come in and you just kind of move them around, you might be surprised sometimes what you'll come up with. And you'll come up with an image that might just look a little better than you imagined. You see, just moving these sliders around. So that's the final way to really affect the tone of your image. So my suggestion is if you have an image that you want to convert to black and white, just first go to the profiles and see if there's a profile there that works. One warning though, when you're using profiles, sometimes these sliders in the calibration tab won't work any longer or won't do anything. These um, white balance sliders may not do anything any longer. And even the black and white mix sliders won't be black and white mix. They'll, they just won't work. So sometimes uh, when you're using a profile, it eliminates all these other um, ways you could adjust the tone in your image. But by all means, check profiles first, see if there's something you like there. If not, then go to the basic tab, click on black and white, do these tone adjustments first in here. Then I suggest you go to the B&W black and white mix tab and adjust those. Then go up to the um, white balance tint mainly because you'll find the temps uh, the temp uh, slider generally will just make the image brighter or darker so generally the tint slider there to kind of touch up the tones the way you want them and then finish it off by going down to the calibration uh, tab and move these sliders around and try moving them all a little bit and see if you uh, get a better look to your image something you're you're hoping to to achieve you know that looks a little better to you and I could just fiddle around with those a little bit till I get something I like and I kind of like that and then once you're done adjusting all the tones now you could work on noise reduction sharpening and things like that um, you could do noise reduction early in, in your workflow you could do I always suggest you do no, noise reduction very early in your workflow and I kind of left it out but as soon as I converted it to black and white do noise reduction and then come back, do everything I mentioned, then come in and then do some things that will make your image sharper, maybe texture, clarity, something like that. Go then to the detail tab and do sharpening if, if you need it. And um, finally on this image, because it's a cityscape and you see all those buildings are kind of tilted, tilted back and out and in a little bit. I'll go to the, um, I'm sorry, the transform uh, tab and I'll take this vertical slider and I'm just going to straighten those buildings up. See I'm making that tower on the right nice and straight and the, the city hall over here on the left a little bit straighter at least. I'll click on constrain crop and then it will crop it properly. So I could come back in it looks a little bit maybe just too much like that. So there we are. That's a finished image. I might come in and do a vignette as well just a little bit like that and I'm done. So those are some techniques that hopefully will allow you to create better black and white images in Lightroom. There's before and there's after. Before, after. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>